The Mongol Empire stands as one of history's most extraordinary phenomena. Established by the legendary Genghis Khan and expanded by his successors, it became an empire where various cultures, religions, and ideas not only met but melded. But what were the daily lives of ordinary people under Mongol rule like? And how did the empire manage such a massive expanse containing so many different cultures? Let's first examine the history of the Mongol Empire's creation. Genghis Khan started the Mongol Empire in 1206 and rapidly became one of the largest empires ever, stretching from Eastern Europe to the Sea of Japan. Genghis Khan was born near the Onan River in 1162 and was originally named Temujin, which means of iron or blacksmith. At that time, Mongolia was divided into various nomadic tribes. These tribes often clashed with each other over resources and territory. Genghis Khan showed remarkable leadership skills from a young age. He told his different tribes that if they lived in harmony with each other, they would be able to fight external threats strongly and conquer new lands. To unite the tribes, Genghis Khan employed various strategies. He formed alliances through marriages, creating bonds of loyalty between his tribe and others. He also proved himself as a capable and fearless warrior, earning the respect of many tribes who were impressed by his military prowess. Genghis Khan was also known for his fairness and justice. He established a code of laws called the Yasa, which helped to govern the behavior of his people and maintain order within the tribes. Through a combination of military conquests, alliances, and diplomatic negotiations, Genghis Khan gradually brought the Mongol tribes together under his leadership. His vision and determination were instrumental in transforming the fragmented tribes into a unified force that would go on to establish one of the largest empires in history, the Mongol Empire. In 12,006, everyone agreed to call him Genghis Khan, which means universal ruler. In 1211, the Mongols began their invasions and attacked the Jin dynasty in northern China and kept fighting until 1234, which caused the dynasty to fall. After the death of Genghis Khan in 1227, his successors continued to expand the empire. Genghis Khan's son and successor, Ogadai Khan, led the Mongols to conquer lots of land in Central Asia and Eastern Europe. The Mongols started invading Europe. They reached as far as modern-day Poland, Hungary, and the gates of Vienna. These invasions were brutal and caused a lot of fear in Europe. Kublai Khan, Genghis Khan's grandson, set up the Yuan dynasty in China in 12,071. Kublai Khan tried to attack Japan in 1274 and 1281, but both times, big storms stopped them. Japanese people called these storms kamikaze, which means divine winds. The Mongol Empire was ruled in a unique way, which was combined ancient nomadic customs with the need to govern a massive territory. At the top of this structure was the great Khan, initially Genghis Khan, who held absolute power over the empire. This position was usually passed down to a chosen son or close male relative, but it needed approval from a council of Mongol chiefs called a Kurultai. The Kurultai played a vital role in governing the empire, discussing important matters such as succession and offering advice to the great Khan. Genghis Khan introduced a system of meritocracy where people were chosen based on their abilities rather than birth. He incorporated conquered peoples into his administration, appointing governors known as Nuyans to manage different regions. These Nuyans were responsible for maintaining order, collecting taxes and recruiting soldiers for the Mongol army. Under Mongol rule, the empire was governed in a way that promoted cultural exchange and tolerance. One of the notable aspects of Mongol rule was the revitalization and protection of the Silk Road, a trade route that connected Europe to China. This led to a significant movement of people, goods, technologies, and ideas across the empire. Genghis Khan and his successors embraced a policy of religious tolerance, allowing various religious practices to thrive within the empire. Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, and other religious people who spread their beliefs traveled extensively across the empire and learned from each other. Art and science flourished under Mongol rule. Cities like Karakoram and Kanbalik became centers of cultural and intellectual activity. Moreover, the Mongol Empire played a crucial role in the transfer of knowledge and technology. Inventions and scientific ideas from China, such as gunpowder and papermaking, were introduced to the West. 
In return, the Mongols brought back knowledge and goods from the West and the Islamic world to Asia. Additionally, the Mongol Empire facilitated the exchange of culinary practices and ingredients. Spices, recipes, and cooking methods were shared among different cultures, leading to the emergence of new cuisines that combined elements from various traditions. The Mongol Empire's extensive trade and communication network facilitated the spread of languages and literary works. The use of the Uyghur script as the official writing system by the Mongols exemplifies cultural assimilation and exchange within the empire. Life for common people in the Mongol Empire varied depending on whether they were nomadic herders or settled in urban areas. Each tribe was led by one leader, and these tribes formed the backbone of the Mongol military machine. For the majority who were nomadic herders, life revolved around their animals and the harsh conditions of the Central Asian steppes. They lived in portable tents called gurs, also known as yurts, and moved with their flocks of sheep, goats, horses, and camels in search of pasture land. Their diet mainly consisted of meat and dairy products from their livestock. On the other hand, those who settled in conquered territory, especially in cities like Baghdad, Samarkand, and Kanbalik, adapted to a more sedentary lifestyle. These urban Mongols, along with the diverse populations of the empire, including traders, craftsmen, and farmers, created a more varied social fabric. Despite their differences, women in the Mongol Empire generally enjoyed more freedom compared to their counterparts in other societies. They were involved in managing families and sometimes participated in decision-making within their tribes. Elite Mongol women even played significant roles in politics and governance. Daily life in the Mongol Empire also included cultural practices and festivities. The Nadam Festival, for example, celebrated traditional Mongol skills like horseback riding, archery and wrestling. These activities were not only entertainment, but also ways to maintain the martial skills essential for the Mongol way of life. Law and order in the Mongol Empire were maintained through a structured legal system and efficient administration of justice. At the heart of this system was the Yasa, a set of laws established by Genghis Khan. Although the full text of the Yasa hasn't survived, historical records suggest it covered a wide range of topics, including governance, military discipline, and societal norms. The Yasa was known for its strictness, with severe punishments for crimes like theft, adultery, and betrayal. It emphasized absolute loyalty to the Khan and the state, fostering unity among the diverse peoples of the empire. The Mongol legal system focused on retributive justice, often imposing harsh penalties such as death or severe corporal punishment for serious offenses. Justice was administered by the Khan and appointed officials, including regional governors and local administrators. These officials ensured that laws were obeyed and justice was swiftly delivered. The Mongol Empire faced its downfall due to a mix of internal conflicts and outside pressures. After Kublai Khan's death, the strong centralized control the empire once had began to weaken. Managing such a large territory with different cultures and languages became increasingly tough. Unlike other empires where the next ruler was usually clear, the Mongol Empire saw intense fights over who would lead next. This weakened the empire's unity. It eventually split into different Khans ruled by Genghis Khan's descendants. In China, the Han Chinese people rebelled against the Yuan dynasty, leading to its fall. In Persia, economic problems and the Black Death caused the Ilkhanate to fall apart. The Golden Horde lost territories due to internal issues and the rise of Russian states. Despite its decline, the Mongol Empire's legacy lives on.